Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Tuesday Night Special, and now it's time for us to talk about what happened during the second half of Monday Night Raw from Lexington, Kentucky. And the next match to take place on Monday Night Raw, if you can even call it that, would be between the Viking Raiders going one-on-one -on -one against the Bollywood Boys, better known as the Singh Brothers. And the Singh brothers would come down to the ring doing their traditional Bollywood dance and would even get out their Bollywood camera to film a Bollywood movie only for that Bollywood movie to turn into a real life horror film. Cause not only the Viking Raiders would meet them on the outside of the ring but throw them into each other for them to land almost on their necks on the ground. Ouch! But if you thought the pain was over from there folks, it would only get worse because they would get tossed back inside the ring, they would get hit with a body slam on top of each other for Ivar to land on top of the both of them, and then one of the Bollywood boys, because I can't tell them apart, and that's because of the same hairstyle and everything else, yeah, they would suffer the wrath of a Viking experience like no other for the Bollywood boys to lose this match to the Viking Raiders via pinfall. So yeah, those tag team championships aren't going anywhere anytime soon unless AOP decides to go for them. And I would love to see that match with AOP versus the Viking Raiders. A real life hoss fight if you ask me. And speaking of fights folks, the next thing to take place on Monday Night Raw, and yeah we might as well go out of order because this match was so awesome. Alistair Black going one on one against Buddy Murphy. And this match was nothing short of a kick contest because Alistair Black wanting revenge for what happened yesterday with him getting hit with a tiger knee right into the face with a steel chair would then decide to seek his revenge by kicking the chest, the head, and the legs of one Buddy Murphy during this match. And yes, he would be able to pull off a tiger sweep during this said contest and would even be able to Sparta kick, you know, Buddy Murphy right directly into the timekeeper's area. And the guy who was behind that chair, I'm pretty sure got crushed. I could be wrong. But Buddy Murphy would get some offense during this match by not only doing a front drop kick to the head of one Alistair Black for Black's head to bounce off the ring pose, but also would be able to do a snafu like suplex with the assist of the ropes into the, I mean outside of the ring toward the barricade. And to make matters worse, he would even hit a Murphy's Law during this match for a near fall and would even try to cheat during this said match and do a roll up and would even grab the tights, still not able to win. But ultimately, this match will come to an emphatic again after Buddy Murphy would get kicked off the top rope by Alistair Black and almost go flying into the first row. But Buddy Murphy would then try to do Alistair Black's Black Mask during this set contest for Alistair to duck the kick, kick him in the face, and then only get a two count because the referee said, Oh, I saw one of the shoulders up. I think the referee was just a fan of, you know, Buddy Murphy getting kicked in the mouth. So Alistair would oblige him by picking him up again. And with Buddy Murphy on his knees in the finish him pose from Mortal Kombat. Yeah, another black mask, lights out, one, two, three. Alistair Black three times in a row would beat Buddy Murphy in the center of the ring. And after the match was over, Buddy would just sit on the outside of the ring just disappointed in an all hope is lost sort of moment and would just say to Charlie Caruso, not now, not now, not in the mood, not now. But to flash back to what happened before this awesome kicking contest, folks, Asuka would sign the contract along with Becky Lynch for the Women's Championship title match that will take place at the Royal Rumble, which only ended with Asuka spitting green mist in the eyes of one Becky Lynch. And after Becky Lynch would get the green mist out of her eyes, she would ask for a microphone and say all the praise, all the accolations, all the money 
see all the titles is just poison for somebody like me because I can't find that killer instinct and they've been hiding Asuka from me for this long time and I'm gonna take Asuka out if she, I even have to take myself out with her. Now granted that wasn't the exact word she said, but yeah, let's just say folks, Becky Lynch is looking to take anybody down with her just to take down Asuka. And I got a feeling at the Royal Rumble, if she doesn't find that killer instinct, she just might. It might happen. And with that said, folks, the next match to take place on Monday Night Raw, if you can even call it a match, would be Eric Rowan going one-on-one -on -one against a man with no name. Since they didn't say his name during the commentary because he wasn't in ring long enough, because I guess... <laughs> And there's no easy way to explain this, folks. During the match, Eric Rowan was gonna show the guy what was in the cage. He didn't want to see it and basically pulled the Sylvester when he tried to go after the bird, but they said he was gonna go to the fiery pits of hell. I don't want him! I don't want him! But then next thing you know, Eric Rowan would try to reach into the brown dark cage for whatever was in it, but it would bite him in the hand then, next thing you know, he would just start screaming, bad, bad, bad! Condominium smash in the corner, iron claw, Eric Rowan, your winner, and afterwards would just take the cage and go back into the dark abyss where he came from. Yeah, that was the thing. And the main event for the evening, and I guess the M. Dicky match brought to life, folks, would see Seth Rollins and the Authors of Pain tagging up to go against the Big Show, Kevin Owens, and the Itzel Factor leader of the Nation of Violence, Samoa Joe, in a fist fight. And like I said last week, folks, this match, the rules, same as the match for an M. Dicky confrontation fight. The one that is still standing after everybody got knocked down would win the contest. And throughout the night, Kevin Owens was worried about the rules of this match, only for Big Show to say, this is a 7XE fist, and it has an appointment with the side of Seth Rollins' head, and he's gonna make it happen for the night. And basically said that his hands look like ham, so I guess the confidence of one Kevin Owens was no restored. But at the same time, on the other side of the fence, Seth Rollins would preach his rhetoric, saying that he has to show them tonight what happens to people who stands up against the Monday Night Messiah. And before this match could even begin, and before the Big Show could make its entrance, Seth Metal Seth Rollins would jump him from behind along with the Authors of Pain, causing Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe to actually come out with kendo sticks swinging like crazy to help out their big backup. And during this match where action would go back and forth and probably one of the craziest things I've seen. And remember folks when I said when they had the new set for Monday Night Raw that it looked like a giant oversized ski ball ramp? Now I can say it looks like a skate park ramp because Kevin Owens actually ran up the side of the ramp and did a rope flip plancha or a cannonball, cannonball, to quote Mike today or one of the announcers from WCW right on top of both members of the Authors of Pain. And speaking of pain, Samoa Joe would add on to that pain by doing a big boy senton to Razor on the outside of the ring. But unfortunately, the tides would turn after Seth Rollins would ask for help from Buddy Murphy, who would still be sitting out there like a lost child, saying, help us, help us, quickly help us. And you know what it reminded me of? Almost of the same thing that happened with uh, Anakin in that one scene in the Star Wars Episode 3 where I guess Palpatine was getting shot with his own lightning and he asked for his help and lo and behold I guess that message of help worked cause Buddy Murphy would get up, 
low blow the Big Show, help him out by throwing Big Show through the table, and Akam and Razor would get the upper hand on both Samoa Joe and Kevin Owens by putting them both on the announce table and slamming Kevin Owens through Samoa Joe through the announce table, taking them both out. And once the action hit back into the ring, all of them would gangland beat down the Big Show enough for none other than Seth Metal to finish the job with a blackout turning out Big Show's lights for the match to go in favor of the Monday Night Messiah and his disciples via knockout. So yeah, that was the first ever, I guess, match of, you know, fist fight variety that would take place on Monday Night Raw since the Brawl for Alls that took place well over a decade ago. I think two decades it's been since the last Brawl for All. I could be wrong. But nevertheless, ladies and gentlemen, that would wrap up Raw for the night. So without further ado, I think we should head back into the music. And when we return, we'll be back with more Streetlight Crusading goodness as the Tuesday Night Special rolls on right after this. So don't go anywhere just yet, folks, and stay tuned. 